Thank you. Um, before I start, I'm going to tell you two things. I'm French, so you, have, you will have to apologize for my very pitiful English. <laughs> and the second is that you'll have again to, to um, apologize, to excuse me. It's a very difficult exercise for me to be here in front of you because I'm quite shy and I hate to do that exercise. But I had to do it. I had to do it. So I'm very honored today to be with you at FIT, which asked me to speak at this, commence this commencement, which is your commencement. But I have to be very honest with you. Till yesterday morning, I didn't know what a commencement was. <laughs> and thank God I had lunch with Dr. Brown, and she said, about the, com about the commencement, she said, this is the end of four years at FIT. So being French, I say, okay, so commencement is the end. Isn't it funny because commencement, commencement in French, means the beginning. So Dr. Brown said, well, yes, but it is the end, but actually it is also a beginning. <laughs> so it started to be very confusing for me. Uh, and she said, well, Mr. Le Boutin, the student receive a degree, you receive something, and you also deliver something. And she added, it's a type of threesome kind of thing, but a giant one. It's involving the parents, it's involving, it's involving the friends, it's involving the community. So I say, wow, this seems like a lifetime experience for sure. And uh, the second question that I was about to ask to Dr. Brown, I kept it for myself, and I just wanted, I was thinking, why me? And I know that FIT is not totally only dedicated to shoes. Thank God for me, actually. Otherwise, I'm seeing all these students designing shoes. That I would be in trouble. <laughs> and, so I thought, well, I guess it's because I'm inspirational, as one said. And, but what could I possibly say to you trying to be inspirational? I sort of know in a way that I live what one calls um, a success story in, in the history of fashion. But what could I say to you which could leave you a mark, a, a print, something that maybe would have helped me, for instance, when I started my company. I couldn't find really a specific thing, but so I'm going just to tell you a little bit about my, my journey, my personal journey. And as I sort of have more or less six or seven minutes to talk to you about this journey, I thought that I had to divide it in very few words. So I found three words. One is friendship. The second one is freedom. And the third one is a little bit longer. It's, I called it leaving doors opened. As a young man in Paris, I heard a lot of what we call in French, les idées reçues, which in English is preconceived ideas. One, I remember, was you should never sleep where you work. <laughs> I said, okay. Another one was do not, do never work with friends. You'll end up being, becoming enemies. And I have to do you a confidence. For eight years, I've been sleeping in my studio, in my design studio. There was no showers, but I felt great. 
and I do not regret that I did sleep where I was working. And also, I started my company 23 years ago with my two best friends, Henri and Bruno. And 23 years after, we are still the three best friends. So, again, about preconceived ideas, I give you something to think about. Don't go through that. I did not listen to them. And I can tell you I'm doing very fine. I also have an apartment with a shower now. <laughs> so I did the country, the country, but it was, in a way, my rules. And I think that everybody should have their own rules. There was another preconceived idea, which I heard at that time, which was, timing is everything. I started again my company in 91, at the very end of 91, which was, in terms of timing, probably the worst timing. It was the end of the Gulf War. The economy worldwide was a disaster. It was really super stupid to start at that time. <laughs> but I thought, if you have to listen to something, it is your inner timing. It is not the timing of the world. So it's never a very good timing. So another thing to think about, listen to your inner timing, your inner clock. This is what counts if you want to do something. Listen to yourself. So the second word I just mentioned was freedom. Freedom has always been a key thing for me, very, very, very important in my work. Freedom of joy, of working the way I want. Even my passport makes me very happy. I'm having a French passport, which is a European passport. I can sort of go everywhere with it. Just looking at my passport is a sign of freedom, and I'm very, very happy. Freedom is different for everyone. For me, for instance, my freedom had to go through the fact that I would do my own company. It does not necessarily mean that everybody has to follow that path. You can be very happy working for people as long as they will respect your freedom of creativity, your vision. So this is what I will tell you. But now, enough with me. Let's talk about you. I see you all around here, the students, the families, the grannies. <laughs> Hello, grannies. <laughs> I saw one who just started sleeping. This is not nice. So I'm going to address myself to the student later, to the granny, but <laughs> let's go back to the student. It's, it is a great thing to be at your age. You're young. Well, don't take me wrong. I do not think of myself as an old bag or anything. I feel perfectly young too, but you are at a very specific type of age, which is a wonderful age. I loved all the ages myself, but it's a wonderful age. It's, you have the age of, not innocence, but an age where you can follow all your dreams, but also an age where you can change. You can change your dreams, you can change path, when you start something, when you're young, you should not decide, this is it, this is my way, and I will go all the way. You have the age where you can change. You can experience and maybe dislike it and go in another way. Your age is still an age of exploration. And I give you an example, myself. 
<laughs> I'm ashamed. I'll come back to me now. When I was 12, 12 and a half, no, 12, 12, 12, I was already designing shoes, was obsessed with shoes. And I did it for till 25, 26, been working for different people. And for some reason, I started to be fed up of designing for other people. So I just stopped. And I started to do something completely different. I started to design um, landscape architect. I started to design gardens. I did it for two years, and it was a wonderful experience. The problem with that is that I was in my 20s, and I was very impatient. And you need a lot of patience to be a garden designer. So I came back to shoes. But if you ask me if I was stupid, if I wasted some time doing something else, I would tell you absolutely not. I've been learning through the garden, through the flowers, through the foliage, so many things that I could incorporate to my work now that it was totally worth it, and I do not regret one second of my garden experience, apart from some bugs were not so great. But the rest, really, I was happy. So, if I may tell you something more today for your commencement. Oh, God. I have some little things, but... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Somebody do the joke. Ah. Oh, somebody did a bad joke. That is so rude. I could blush. Okay. Uh, in, for your commencement, do not necessarily pursue a very specific goal. Be more gentle with yourself. Be more, uh, be more supple to yourself. You should enjoy the process of every day. It is a journey of all these every days which will constitute your career, not a precise target. An achievement is not one day in the future. It is the sum of all these moments where you have learned and loved and nourished your passion. Never forget that it is your vision that comes through your work. Our designs are a complete part of ourselves. Do not be afraid to live life to the fullest because it is your day, your experiences that will nourish your work. This is why I truly believe that one needs to live, live well, and love, love well, to then create some desirable element which will show passion. But what you unveil, I know every passion is different, but what you will unveil and share to others must be a passionate message. So feel good and feel great to leave your passion. Something you like so much that you cannot not share it with the rest of the world. Well, um, this is all what I have to tell you today. But may this commencement be the beginning or the continuation of a passion that we all share here in common. The passion for design, love, and fashion. My congratulations to all of you. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Louboutin, for your really inspirational words. It was, and you can see you had a receptive audience, I would say. So I now invite to the podium Robin Burns McNeil, who is the Vice Chair of the FIT Board of Trustees for conferral of the honorary degree. Ms. Burns McNeil, I have the honor to present Christiane Laboutin, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa. As the most creative designer of luxury footwear today, please come and stand with us. <laughs> You have turned shoes into objects of obsession. Women even ask you to autograph their shoes. With your iconic bright red sole, you almost single-handedly return the stiletto to popularity. It has been noted that you turned an insignificant part of the shoe into both a visually interesting and commercially vital component. Your career has taken you from designing for the showgirls of Paris you said they enabled you to see the shoe as a singular object because you, they wore little else. <laughs> <laughs> to apprenticing for Charles Jordan, to working as a designer for Chanel. In 1992, you opened your own atelier, attracting clients among royalty and movie stars. In the last 13 years, your business has expanded to five continents and sells 600,000 pairs of shoes annually. You've added handbags, beauty, and a men's collection, all to great acclaim. And while the luxury market suffered during the global recession in 2008, yours was ranked the most prestigious luxury shoe brand, and your business had double-digit growth. Your company remains privately owned, and that is that freedom to which you attribute your unrestrained creativity. Taking inspiration from themes as diverse as plant life and fetish, you personify the power of a singular vision. Always staying true to the playful, creative spirit of design while maintaining the highest quality and understanding the desires of your customer. The luxury market is really the holy grail for many FIT students, and your blend of artistic expression, coupled with the practical imperatives of business, make you a true role model for our students. So we are pleased and proud that the State University of New York, through the Fashion Institute of Technology, bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa. In recognition of your extraordinary creativity and artistic sensibility, the power of your singular vision, and also for that innovation, the bright red soul, the State University of New York is honored to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts. By virtue of the authority vested in me and with the concurrence of the faculty of the State University of New York, I confer upon you, Christian Louboutin, the degree of fine arts, honoris causa, and invest you with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I hand you this diploma and direct President Brown to vest you with the hood appropriate to your degree. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'm going to thank the FIT, but I'm also going to thank my parents. And uh, as you should all do, all the parents who are here, I own them a lot, as probably you own them. They've been supporting to you, and it's a good thing to feel that way. Thank you to all of you.